Okay, so hopefully the microphone's set up better this time. I spent a little bit of time playing with it. That last uh, version I did for this for the last version of Inventor was a little annoying to say the least. Okay, so we're going to show you how to draw uh, or, or build a 3D model of a Lego brick. And we're going to do this using Autodesk Inventor Professional 2016. Uh, you can launch it in the lab. It sh there should be uh, an icon on the desktop. You can either double click it or click it once and press the enter key. The computers that we have in there should be uh, more than adequate to run it however, however you decide. They respond pretty quickly. Okay, so the home screen that comes up, uh, I, I don't really like to use this and I know in the past Autodesk has had problems with this causing conflict with the, um, our, our computer systems. So I'm just going to close this and choose new. Oops, we'll click right on the new icon and we want a standard IPT part. Uh, in the, the window over here we have metrics so we can right off the bat pit, pick metric as our unit of measurement. We want standard millimeter IPT. Just click on that. IPT is inventor part and click on create and it will create our file here in a minute. Okay, and now uh, let's go ahead and start a 2D sketch. Now I'm not sure how they're set up in the lab. Uh, by default, I think the setting is start without a sketch and then allow the user to create a 2D sketch in whatever plane they want. So we're going to start in the XY plane. So you'll click on start 2D sketch it'll bring up a window like this and as you move the cursor around you see it, gets, it selects each of the two-dimensional planes. We have YZ being the vertical plane, XZ being the horizontal plane, and then XY also being a vertical plane. I used to refer to this as the frontal plane, the profile plane, and then the horizontal plane. Okay, so we're going to choose XY plane and let's go look up some dimensions. I found this by going to Google and doing a search for classic Lego brick dimensions and it comes up as the first uh, link. So I click and it gives you, let me get that away from my breath so I'm not whispering in your ear, that's a little creepy even to me. So it gives us some dimensions on here and they're helpful but it's a little bit more helpful if you see it in the context of a Lego brick. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Whoops, zoomed in. Yeah, so I'm holding the control key in while I'm using the, the scroll wheel on the mouse. Okay, so a couple things. The overall width of the block space is actually 32 by 16. There's two tenths off to allow one tenth for clearance on each side. So we have, it's actually 16 minus a tenth here, minus a tenth here. And somewhere here, they sh right here, they show you. So it's 31.8 minus the 2 times 0.1. We have a 0.1 millimeter clearance here and a 0.1 millimeter clearance here. That's so that they go together. Okay, so they give us a lot of information here. Uh, we're going to start with the overall size of this view minus the knobs on top and draw that. And it gives it to us as 31.8 is this horizontal distance and 9.6 is the height. And here's a better view of it. So 31.8 wide, 9.6 tall. Oh, they give us the height of the, of the uh, knobs here as well. But let's just draw this rectangle first, the 31.8 and 9.6. So I'm going to Alt-Tab back to my software. And I could draw it line by line. In fact, there's multiple types of line here. I would suggest you can download this version of Inventor by going to the Autodesk Educator, Educator community, community and indicating you're a student. They'll allow you to download it and install it on a Windows machine at home for free for three years. So uh, it, it's a really neat piece of software to play with. I'm not sure why you wouldn't do that. So in the rectangle tool, you have lots of ways to draw rectangles as well. You can do two different ways to draw two point. You can go from the center to the corner, or you can go from corner to corner. 
So this is the one we're going to choose. But again, you know, when you have time, come in here and play with some of these. So we're going to choose a two-point rectangle. And when you draw this, well, I'm just going to throw this on here at uh, the width is 31.8. And then if you hit the tab key, it'll go to the next box. And this was 9.6, I believe. And then press the Enter key. Now, we've got some things here to talk about. This version, by default, leaves what's called the geometric constraint constraints on, showing you what, what's, uh, what geometric geometric constraints are automatically applied. So this one and this one are parallel to each other. That is this constraint right here. And this line and this line are parallel to each other. This line is horizontal. And it's showing the uh, perpendicular constraint as well. So, and but notice, and I want to see if I can get rid of this, this window down here. Um, now we could try it this way. I just want to show that down there in the corner it shows what how many dimensions I need. And I wonder if I can let me see if I can close this window. It's not allowing me to close it. It's there's software that it wants to install that I don't want it to install. It's I believe it's Windows 10. And this version of Inventor I don't believe is compatible with Windows 10. So let's see if I can get that up above there. There we go. There we go. So I'm not using the whole window, but that's okay. And we'll fill this. There, now we got it. So it's it's showing me that it's not fully constrained. One of the things you have to do to constrain any object is indicate where it is in 3D space. So this object, I have all the constraints I need for the object, but I need to tell AutoCAD where it is in 3D space. It's just kind of floating out here. So to do that, I am going to constrain this point using the coincident constraint to the origin. So this origin, let's open this up. That is this point right here. It's 0, 0, 0. So it's 0, 0 on the x, y axis, and then 0 on the z axis. So coincident constraint, give me this point and constrain it here. And now you notice it's fully constrained. I have the location of this corner. It knows that these are parallel, these are parallel, and this is 90 degrees. And then it has the distance for those. So I have all the constraints I need. OK. Uh, let me right click to get out of that tool and click OK. And then the next thing I need to do, I need to extrude this. So before you do any of the 3D modeling uh, options, you have to finish your sketch. So you can either finish sketch by clicking up here in the menu bar or right clicking and choosing finish 2D sketch. And it automatically will go to a 3D view. And since it's just a plane, it's just showing, you as a, it's just showing it as a single plane there. Let's go back and see what the extrusion distance needs to be. And it's not showing here, obviously. We need to know the distance from the front to the back. And it shows us right here. Remember I said earlier this was 16. And then they allow 0.1 millimeters of clearance on both sides. So we'll go back. And you can choose Extrude from the 3D model menu up here. Or again, right click on the screen. And the ones that are used most often are pretty handy. So let's go ahead and choose Extrude here. And I want it to go back into the screen. It's just a preference in this case. My nephew prefers having it extruded the same distance on each side. So this would be 5. I'm sorry, this would be half of 15.8. And this would be half 15.8. For this, I'm just going to extrude it back 15.8 millimeters. And click OK. Now let's uh, let me undo and go back into that so I can show you something might be different in the lab. So again, we'll go ahead and extrude. In case you come in and this is all you see, this little drop down will give you the access to this full uh, dialog box. Again, I want this going back, and then click OK. And in this case, it doesn't really matter whether you call cause it to go forward or backward. Uh, it's in this case, for me, it's just a preference. You could get away with doing either. OK, so the next thing we need to do is those knobs on the top. 
So I want I want to go to the top view, and notice there are pl different places you can grab on this block up here to get it to rotate. I want to go. We'll go to front so it rotates it so that's the front's uh, horizontal and vertical for us, and then rotate so we have the top view. And I want to create a new sketch on this surface. Again, you can click Start 2D Sketch. It'll ask you to choose where you want to start, or just right-click on the surface and choose New Sketch. I use a lot of the shortcuts simply because they are just so much faster. I'm going to zoom out using the scroll wheel, and then put my cursor over here to try to center this a little better. And let's go see what we need. So it's showing me the diameter of those pegs or knobs being 4.8 millimeters. And then the distance, notice it's showing that 8, 8, 8, 8. So that's this whole distance across here would be, once again, 32 minus the point 1 on this side and the point 1 on this side for clearance. So then this distance right here from here to here is going to be 7.9, or I'm sorry, 8 minus that point 1. So that would be 7.9. And then the center point to that first knob, let's see if I can find a better, uh, there isn't a better one. I'd like to see a top view of this. Uh, but So the distance from this edge to the center of this peg is going to be that 7.9 divided by 2. So we're, we're going from this line. Uh, but let's go ahead and draw the uh, circle. It's 4.8 millimeters in diameter. And there's multiple ways to do this. I like drawing the circle kind of up here out of the way so it doesn't accidentally pick constraints for me. I don't want any constraints picked accidentally. So it's 4.8 millimeters in diameter. And now I can say, okay, I'm done drawing circles. I want to drag that circle down roughly where it needs to go. And I'll grab by the center, uh, grab by the center point, the center point. There we go. And pull it down here. And let's go ahead and get its distance from here and distance from here. So the distance from here to here is that, let's go ahead and just put that in there, and it's that 7.9 divided by 2. And it comes up as 3.95. And then the distance from this point, from this line to this point, is that same 3.95. The nice thing here, you can indicate you want to give that dimension, and when you indicate what the dimension is, you can just click on that other dimension to make it the same. And so this says this fx means it's a function of this dimension. And you can go in and name the dimensions. We're not going to get involved with that right now. But again, notice now that that's fully constrained. Now there's a couple ways I can proceed from here. I can either make a rectangular array of this geometry and then extrude it to get this height or I can extrude it first and then make the pattern and one of the rules in creating inventor files is always keep your sketches as simple as possible so it's going to be pretty hard to make this any simpler than just a single circle in fact let's go over here and rename this sketch oh, we gotta finish the sketch first and then name it if it'll let us knob sketch okay now I want to extrude that and let's go back and see what the distance is so the height of that knob is 1.8 millimeters and that's pretty simple so let's rotate this a little bit so that we can see what this looks like and again you can grab extrude from here or right click on the screen and choose extrude keeping in mind before you do any 3D modeling you have to finish your sketch so extrude going to choose that geometry it has the correct direction I want to extrude it out of the screen toward me but I only want to make it I believe it was 1.8 and click OK and let's just double check that dimension it is 1.8 and my view style, I, I like this view style set as default 
better than the one that was set as default for 2015. If you go under View, Visual Style, it's shaded with edges. So it's going to show all your edges. The, the, by default, the one that was picked in uh, 20, 2015, um, yeah, 2015 was, yeah, I don't even see that option here anymore. I don't see it. But it, was, it would give you uh, no edges, and so it was frequently difficult to see uh, where your parts were. You, if you weren't at the, just the right angle, you couldn't see what you had done. Okay, so now we need to make a pattern of these knobs. So we'll go back to 3D model because I went into view. Go back to 3D model. And we're looking for pattern. It's right here. And we want to make a rectangular pattern. And by default, features is already selected. You can see it has that... Uh, dotted line around it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that feature. And then the next thing I need to do is pick the direction. So I have to click direction and click on that line. And I want four of those. And they are going to be, let's go back and look at the drawing, see how far apart they are. So from, let's see, the center of each of these knobs is going to be eight millimeters apart. So it's 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 going to be this is going to be the center for something else. But if you look at then the center to from here to here is going to be eight millimeters. I'm trying to show where else they tell you that. Somewhere they'll give you the pitch. Horizontal pitch or distance between knobs eight millimeters. Okay. So we're going to put in here 8, and we have that row of knobs. If we go two directions, this is another neat feature here. Now we can click on this line, and it wants to go up from there. Well, I want it to go down here onto this block, so I'm just going to tell it to change directions. And I have two rows, and again, that distance is also 8. And we're leaving this set for spacing. There's, there's other options here. We may explore them later. So I click on OK. And that quickly, I have all my knobs drawn. Pretty neat. Uh, but underneath, my block is still solid. So let's go to the bottom view. And let's go back and look at the internet drawing we have here. And we can see that it's hollow. And there are a couple ways to do this. But because this wall thickness is not the same between here and here, the best way to draw this is going to be to draw a rectangle in here and then extrude. You can either extrude and add to an object or extrude and cut away. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a rectangle and it tells me the wall thickness is 1.2 so I that's 1.2 here and 1.2 here so let's go back and choose a new sketch. Again, I'm going to right click on the surface and choose new sketch. It just seems easier that way. I don't like where it puts it, but I'm going to zoom out and zoom back in. And once again, I'm going to choose the rectangle to tool, the two point rectangle tool, and just throw one on here. I'm not going to worry about its size yet. Again, I don't want to make sure that it doesn't accidentally pick any constraints. It's sometimes better to draw it off of the drawing. But I don't see it picking any, const any constraints I don't want. And now, I need to right click and say OK to get out of the rectangle tool. I want to dimension this distance and this distance. And then I can either dimension uh, these or I can dimension the overall width of this. And I think this time I'm going to do it a little bit differently and, and you'll see why. So I want the dimension. I'm going to dimension the distance from, let's go this line to this line. Whoops. Oh, I lost my, go back to sketch again. Clicked, got a little bit click happy there. Let's, so this point to this line. I want that distance to be 1.2. So make sure you're clicking that point. 
and it's automatically bringing that geometry up for me which is kind of nice and then I want the distance from this point to this line let's try that again to this line and that's also 1.2 now I could type in 1.2 or I could click on this and it sets those the same now that this is that's how I'm going to dimension this whole thing so that if I were to change the wall thickness in one place it would change it for all of this so the distance from here to here come on that distance is also this dimension and then the distance from here to here that distance is also this dimension and just to show you why that's so neat if I wanted to go in and let's say I wanted that wall thickness to be 2.4 I can click on this and change it to 2.4 and it would automatically update all of those instead of me having to do some math to figure out what this new width would be so where you can dimensions that are dependent on each other you want to make sure that they are by choosing the way we dimensioned it here by making one dimension equal to another and after you get some experience you'll know when you need to do, when you need to do that okay so I'll right click and I can go ahead and finish 2d sketch and get out of the dimension tool at the same time and now I'm ready to extrude this rectangle inside and this is a little bit different so again right click and choose extrude and I need to pick the profile it wants me to extrude and when I grab this I want you to see what it, what it wants to do see it wants to add that to my existing block and that's certainly not what I want to do I want to extrude it back in and notice when I do that it automatically picks this cut so it's cutting that away and then let's go back and look at what that distance is okay so the whole thing from the bottom to the top minus the knobs is 9.6 and then that wall thickness different from this one is only one so that would be 8.6 so I'm gonna go back here and I could say you know I want to take that dimension I could use whatever dimension I used for this and subtract one so I could say uh, but what I'm gonna do instead I'm just because this is in the extrude box I'm gonna go ahead and pick that nine point whoops nine point six minus one and when you go back and look at that you'll see why let's go to edit feature notice it has it as the nine point six minus one and let me just show you what happens if you don't subtract that one when I rotate this you'll see it, it extruded that hole inside and then those knobs are just kind of floating which is kind of neat but it wouldn't stay together so putting it in there is a 9.6 minus 1 when you go back and look at it you have an idea of where that dimension comes from okay so we're almost done here we could go back and name some of these we could name this extrusion uh, let's yeah, let's go ahead and name this let's call this the uh, base block and again we don't have to name it it just makes it easier if you have to go back and edit it to know what's what this extrusion then is the knob we can call this knob extrude so it's obvious it's an extrusion because of the icon that's here but let's just call it knob extrude and then this extrusion this is the hollow base okay now let's go back to the drawing again on the internet and we need to add these features and then these rectangular features so let's go ahead back and go to the bottom view and there we are and so it depends on which one you do first we're going to do the cylinders inside first that's these uh, and when we do that then we want to pick let's let me show you this this surface right here is going to be uh, the surface we draw on and then we're going to extrude toward us so again if you right click and choose new sketch it picks the surface that you click on as the surface where your sketch is created and 
let's go see what the size of those uh, knobs underneath are. I don't know if they, do they have a, okay, so they're calling them the cylinders, the cylinders under the classic bricks. Okay, so they are, the inside diameter is 4.8, the outside di diameter is 6.51. So I'm just going to go back here and quickly draw a circle that is 4.8, and then draw another one that is 6.51. And if you look at them, they share the same center. Y do you know what you call two circles that share the same center? They're called concentric. Let me click OK to get out of the circle tool. I'm going to slide this one over. And concentric is a geometric constraint. It's right here. So all I need to do is choose that and click on one circle and click on the other, and they are now concentric and then right click to get out of the concentric tool and grab the center point and drag it down roughly where we want it. We're going to put the center one in first and you'll see why in a little bit. Okay, so if we know it's in the center then it's going to be that 15.8 divided by 2 from the outside and the 31.8 divided by 2 from the outside going this way. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to dimension from this center point to this line. And again, I don't I don't really need to do that math in my head. I can just say 31.8 divided by 2 and it'll give it to me. Oops. What did I do? Oh, I know what I did. <laughs> that's the one that's the 15.8 divided by 2, right? Okay, so 15.8 divided by 2 from the outside line. Make sure you pick the outside, not the inside. And then dimension this from this center point to here. And that's the 31.8 divided by 2. And again, notice once I put those on there, that shape is fully constrained. Right click again to click OK. That gets me out of the dimension. And now I can extrude that, but again, I have to finish my sketch. Uh, let's see. I suppose I could slide these in a little bit. They're not really a problem where they are. When you put your dimensions on your model, you just want to put them in a place that's convenient. The dimensions on the model are not as important uh, as they are in the annotated drawing. In order to get a, a drawing of this out, you have to create what's called an annotated drawing and then you tell it exactly where you want to put the dimensions and there are specific convention for the conventions for that we'll talk about that later okay so I'm gonna go ahead and extrude so I want to right click and choose finish 2d sketch and there's my extrude tool but once again I like using the right click option and choose extrude and I've got to select what I want it doesn't know exactly what I want to extrude I want to extrude the the space between these two circles and look at that. It remembered that distance that I extruded here, the 9.6 minus 1. And let's take a look at that. How do you know that's what they are? Well, you know they're extruded towards you because you can see if they were extruded away, they would be there would be hit other hidden lines in here. If they didn't come the whole way to this surface, you'd, there would be hidden lines across here showing where they stopped. So you kind of have to assume that this extrusion comes the whole way out from where we started on this surface flush or even with this surface and that's that same distance that 9.6 for that whole height minus that 0.1 uh, I'm sorry minus 1 not 0.1 click on OK and we rotate a little bit more you get a better view of how that is and now to produce the other two once again, we can do a rectangular pattern. <coughs> and I believe this will work. So it's, it's asking us to select the features. So that's the feature we want to array. Let's go look at the distance between them. So these are centered in between these knobs. And somewhere, so right here, that we have the distance here to here to here. That's all. Those are uh, 8 millimeters. So we're going to go from center to center, from the center of the one we just drew, 
8 millimeters to the left and 8 millimeters to the right, and that will give us our other uh, cylinders. Okay, so direction, just click here, and let's get this so that we can see it a little better. And we want, so now we can pick the fact that we want this to be the middle. So we pick the direction, we tell it we want this to be the mid plane. That means, so we're going to go two directions, and we want three of these. But the distance between them we want to be 8 millimeters. And leave it on spacing, that means the distance between the objects. And then click on OK, and have all those. Pretty simple. The last things we need to add are those tabs underneath that help it hold a little bit tighter. So these kind of engage those knobs when you put the, the blocks together. And those are 0.3 tall, 0.6 wide. So let's go ahead and draw one of those. Again, we need to create a new sketch. And in this case, we want that sketch to be in this plane. Kind of a small plane, but that's going to be flush with the bottom. That's where we want to start. We could draw it here and once again extrude it toward us. Uh, so I guess that doesn't really matter. Uh, you just need to be aware of where you've drawn it. And in this case, it's going to be a little bit easier if we draw it uh, on this plane. We could have done the same thing with these. We could have drawn them in this plane and then extruded them back. Uh, it, I'm not sure that there's a, a huge difference as long as you're, you're extruding them in the right direction. So once again, we want to right click on this and choose new sketch and we're going to use the rectangle tool and up here I'm going to make it 0.6 wide tab to go to the other dimension by 0.3 tall and again it has all those constraints turned on I don't want to see those so F9 will turn them off and then right uh, oh we're already out of the rectangle tool that's good now we need a dimension or we need to locate this so I'm going to bring it down here onto our drawing. And the first thing I want to do is make this, this line coincident to this line. So if I choose coincident constraint, it'll let me pick that midpoint of that line. So I want that midpoint of that line coincident to that line. And that takes care of the, the height distance. And now I want to dimension the distance from here to, well, let's see what dimension it gives us. Okay, so it doesn't, the, the, you have to figure this dimension out. So the center of this rectangle lies on the center of that knob. So the distance from the outside to the center of this rectangle would once again be that uh, 8 millimeters minus 0.1, so it's going to be 7.9 divided by 2 to the center of that. So let's go see if we can figure this out. Okay, so we, we now want to dimension the distance from this line to this outside edge. And what we do know is that this, this is the center of this lies on the center of those knobs on top. Let's look at that real quick. So we want the center of that knob to coincide with the center of this so that it can grip right here when those get put together. So let's run that up there. And so we want to take the dimension tool and the distance from here to here. Whoops. We want the horizontal distance. Let's see if it will give it to me. Let's try that again. The distance from this line. There we go, to this surface. There we go. And it is going to be uh, 7.9 divided by 2. That would get us to the center. And then subtract from that whatever half of this is. And that's so we want to be to this edge. If the whole thing is 0.6, that means this much from here to here is 0.3. And that should get it for us. And it's 3.65. That's perfect. Okay. So once again, we could finish this and extrude it and then go ahead and make the pattern. Let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and make the one down here. 
at the bottom. Whoops. And once again, there are a couple ways to do this. Uh, we could probably do this. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and, and extrude this and then see if we can make the pattern like we did that pattern. And we should be able to do that. OK, so right click and finish 2D sketch. And notice I didn't make these ones vertically yet, because I think those have to be done separately. OK, so finish the sketch. Again, now I want to extrude that. And there's my shape. And again, rotate. Look at where it's trying to extrude. We want to extrude uh, back. We don't want to cut. So let's rotate and see what that looks like. That's what we want. And it's, again, that 9.6 minus 1. You could also say to next, and it would give you the same thing to that surface. We can leave it as distance. And it's that 9.6 minus 1. So that's that 8.6 distance. And click on OK. And let's rotate this so we can see it a little better. And now we're going to do a pattern. Once again, a rectangular pattern. We want to select the feature we want to make the pattern of right there. And the direction will be this way. And again, the distance from the center of this to the center of the next one is going to be 8 millimeters. We want, I believe it's four of those. Let's go back and look. Yep, four. So we want four. We want them spaced 8 millimeters apart. And let's see if we can do the one down here as well. Figuring out the dimensions might be a little bit of a chore, but I think we can do that. So we want, don't want this. We want this uh, another direction. And we'll click this direction. We want to flip it, though, so that they're going down below. And then what's that distance going to be? That's, that distance is going to be, if this is 15.8 from here to here, minus 1.2, minus 1.2, I think. So we want 2, and let's just try this, 15.8 minus 1.2 for the one wall, and then minus 1.2 for the other wall, and then minus whatever the thickness of that part is. And I believe it was 0.3, but let me double check. It is 0.3, so minus 1.3, whoops, whoops. Oh, better try that again. <laughs> Rectangular. And rotate that a little bit so I can see this feature. So that, again, choose the direction. And we want 8 millimeters between them. And we want 4. We want to choose another direction because we want to go, to go across here. And I think if I choose this inside, yeah, this will probably work better. Flip the direction. Make sure you choose the inside. And now, let's see. I want to go. That distance inside is going to be 15.8 minus 2.4. So let's start with that 15.8. Let's go minus the 1.2 wall thickness for, whoops, might help if I put that minus in there. Minus 1.2 for one wall thickness. Minus 1.2 for the other wall thickness. And if you notice, it's still on the outside. We also need to subtract the thickness of that extruded feature. And that was minus 0.3. And did we, yep, so we got to go back in here. Minus 0.3. And should be good. Let's see what we get. Go ahead and click OK. And we have them. So once again, we did the distance across here, subtracted the wall thicknesses, and then the thickness of that extruded piece itself. We rotate. We can see those pretty well. Now we only have one more thing to do, and that is the little nubs. Let me see if they give those a name. Uh, it, I don't believe it does. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw those here. 
again we got to create another new sketch so we could go in and call this extrusion right here this could be uh, let's call this the horizontal hmm. would like to see if they give that a name knob beam is that what they call it No. Well, we'll call it the beam. It's that, that part that allows them to hook together. Horizontal, we'll just call it horizontal beam. And then we'll call the other one the vertical beam. Okay, so once again, create a new sketch. I'm going to right click, new sketch. Draw my rectangle up here. It is 0.3 wide by. 0.6 tall. Turn off my constraints by pressing F9 so that I can see what I did. Bring it down to my drawing. And once again, we got to constrain its position. And there's, uh, we constrained the midpoint of this line to this line. So we went up here to coincident constraint, which allowed me to grab this midpoint and put it here. And then the dimension. Again, from here to here was, wow, I don't remember. So it was, once again, that 7.9 divided by 2 minus, again, half of this distance. Because that the 7.9, 7 uh, let me get that number in there, it's not giving me that there we go 7.9 divided by 2 and then that distance remember is to the center of this block so we've got to subtract half of this which would be 0.3 that'll give me the distance to this line which is what I have there so minus 0.3 and we get our 3.65 again so we're now ready to extrude this and then make the pattern and then this brick is done so right click and again I can get out of the dimension tool and finish my 2D sketch in the same step and right click and choose extrude it has my geometry selected but again it's the wrong direction so we want to go back and click OK and there is my uh, one of my vertical uh, beams and now we just need to make another rectangular pattern. Okay, so the feature I want is this one, and let me rotate that so that it will let me grab that. This is the feature that I want, and the direction is this way. We want two, and remember they're eight millimeters apart. Let's zoom out a little bit, and then the second direction is this way and again I want two of those but that distance once again the 31.8 minus 1.2 minus 1.2 minus the thickness of the beam so let's take a look at that it's whoops we got two let's make this 31.8 minus 1.2 for one wall thickness minus 1.2 for the other wall thickness minus 0.3 for the thickness of that extruded feature or the beam I click on OK and my Lego brick is done now the only thing I'm not real sure of that we don't have in here is this dimension right here and it says it's 0.8 but I'm not sure I can find where it tells me any other dimension it doesn't show it in here so we could probably go look on a Lego a re an actual Lego brick and figure that out and add that later so that's that's the end of this video